23rd week of Ordinary Time. And the homily today is called Choir Practice and Courageous Faith. And this is inspired by the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, the Gospel of the Talents. So you might want to go and read that for some context. Let's begin. In my second year of the seminary, I was caught by the choir master singing Disney songs to myself while washing up dishes in the kitchen. More specifically, it was a whole new world from the Aladdin soundtrack, one of my favorite songs. Now, when he heard me, he said, Sam, you can actually hold a note. We're going to need you to join the scholar, that is the seminary choir. Now, I laughed at this suggestion thinking he was joking, but he said, no, seriously, Sam, this isn't really an option. We're going to see you on Tuesday for practice or you can explain your non-attendance to the rector. So uh, that was that. Now, just for context here, prior to the seminary, I had basically never sung in front of anyone ever. I had never done lessons. Uh, I don't know how to read music. Basically, I had no idea what I was doing in a choir context. Now, for several months, I was so scared of making a fool of myself that whenever I was rostered on to sing something solo, whether it be the psalm or an entrance antiphon or anything simple like that, I would mysteriously start feeling unwell, and I would ask another seminarian to take my place. The truth was, at this time, I never believed that my voice was good enough for the seminary scholar. Eventually, however, the day had to come where I ran out of excuses. I was rostered to sing the psalm at Mass on this particular Sunday. I approached the lectern, I was sweating profusely, and I was shaking. My hands were shaking like a leaf. Uh, The organist played me in so beautifully, I opened my mouth, And out came the single highest note I have ever sung, and way out of key. Now, the organist immediately stopped playing, the seminarians and the priests on the sanctuary lost it, and my face went from this white to a deep deep purple in two seconds flat. Every single fear of mine was realized in a single moment. Now, I realize that this doesn't sound like an inspiring story. But after that particular mass, the choir master came up to me and after making, obviously, a few very well-deserved jokes, he congratulated me on having the courage to give the singing a go, to try to get up there and sing in public. He said, look, we all make mistakes. And to be honest, you made a mistake today. But don't forget, you were chosen for the scholar for a reason and you owe it to this community to keep going. So despite my spectacular failure, the encouragement that I received helped me push past the fear and keep trying to sing. Now, even after six years, I think it was 2017 that that happened, I still can't read music, but I do sing the best that I can, especially in mass for the glory of God and for the community of the church. Now, in the gospel today, we hear this parable of the talents. Now, these are, of course, not literal talents like singing, painting, gaming, sport, or whatever. Rather, it's referring to a unit of weight that was used to measure precious metals, and it equated to about 35 kilos or so. So if that is gold we're talking about, each of these talents was worth about $3.5 million. Now, that means the master has just given his servants... His first servant, 17.5 million, the second one, 7 million, and the last servant, $3.5 million. Now, this is a ridiculous amount of money to be entrusting to servants. Now, even the servant who only had the one talent, it's not as if he's dealing with, with chump change here. He's got an extraordinary responsibility given to him by his master, and they're all entrusted uh, with his treasure to do something valuable with it. Now, when the master returns to check on his investment, servants one and two have doubled their capital. And he says to each of them, well done, good and faithful servants. You have shown that you can be faithful in small things. I will entrust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Now, immediately we notice that this massive amount of money, this millions of dollars is considered by the master a small thing. Now, that tells us something. In other words, I think Jesus is trying to tell us that extraordinary wealth is like nothing when compared to the soul who loves God, both in this life and in eternity with God in heaven. Now, these servants, they're considered to be faithful because they took this invaluable gift of their master, which is beyond anything they could have possibly earned for themselves, and they put it to the best possible use. They courageously used their gift and they received back twice in return. Now, I think that this parable of the talents 
is a beautiful image or a symbol almost of sanctifying grace. See, as Christians, we receive this grace in baptism. It is an unmerited gift from God. And like the talents in the parable, it is beyond anything that we ourselves could earn or deserve. The Catechism teaches that grace is first and foremost the gift of the Spirit who justifies and sanctifies us. But grace also includes the gifts that the Spirit gives to help us in God's work, to enable each of us to collaborate in the salvation of others and the growth of the body of Christ, the church. Now, when we respond faithfully to these graces, to the grace that God gives us through daily relationship with God in prayer, through loving our neighbor in our charitable works, in our regular reception of the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and confession, then like the talents, the graces we receive begin to grow and even double. And the more that we receive, the more that we use them, the more that we receive, and it makes us ever more ready to enter into the master's happiness, that is, eternal life with God. But then we read about this third servant who was afraid of the master. And he hid his talent in the ground. He buries and cuts himself off from this gift of sanctifying grace that has been so generously given to him. This enormous, undeserved wealth. He cuts himself off from using it. And as a result, the master comes back and calls him wicked and lazy and good for nothing. And he's thrown into the dark where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, you'll notice here, and I think it's important to mention, Jesus does not mince words here. He really is emphasizing that judgment and hell are a real possibility. In fact, that I think is why St. Paul is stressing in today's second reading, stay awake and be sober. In, In other words, never become comfortable with the immorality of a culture that disregards the law of God. Now, I think it would be crazy to think that Jesus was somehow bluffing about hell when he speaks about it again and again throughout the Gospels. In fact, we're hearing it a lot at this time of the year in particular. Last week we heard of the foolish virgins who were locked outside and they were barred from the banquet and the Lord said, I do not know you. Next week we hear the separation of the sheep from the goats going into eternal life and the goats into eternal fire. See, hell is a place of complete, willful separation from God for those who use their God-given freedom to reject God himself to use their God-given freedom to reject his love, to reject his invaluable gift of life and of grace. But I say all of this, but I want you to really listen because this next point is very important. This parable and the whole gospel of Jesus is not about living our life in fear of hell. The gospel is not about living our life in fear of hell because I think that is unfruitful faith. See, in today's parable, it was precisely because the third servant lived in fear of his master that he was paralyzed into inaction. He was so scared to put a foot wrong that he failed to make use of the talent that was given to him, and this fear led him to do precisely the opposite of his master's will. Now, I think that Martin Luther in in history is an example of this. A devout Catholic monk, full of talent and intellect, but so crippled, so sadly crippled by fear of God's judgment that he would sometimes spend hours and hours in confession day after day. His fear was so intense that it led him to fundamentally question and eventually reject the doctrine that the human soul can be made inherently righteous by God. So this parable, and I want to repeat this, it's not about fear, but about being thankful, courageous, and faithful. Thankful, courageous, and faithful. Thankful for the invaluable gift of sanctifying grace that saves us from sin and makes salvation possible. Courageous enough to act on that grace, using the gifts of the Spirit and our natural talents to live the faith out, to spread God's love and to build up the kingdom of God on earth. And faithful enough that we do these things often and persevere in faith till the end. Thankful, courageous, and faithful. Now, we don't have to be the best at everything we do. God does not judge us on how gifted we are, but on how we use our gifts. Now, as a singer, I was nearly the last place in the the choir 
in the in the seminary that I went to. But I kept going. I kept persevering as best as I could for the glory of God. And now you, my poor parishioners and those who are listening to the podcast, well, maybe not on the podcast, but at least my poor parishioners, now you have to listen to me sing almost every week at Mass. So let's finish this homily now by giving thanks to God for the incredible gift of our Catholic faith and for the sanctifying grace that has been given to every single one of us in baptism. Let's also give thanks for our our literal skills and our talents, and we might spend some time reflecting on how we might better use those gifts in the generous service of God. And finally, for those of you who are preparing for Mass or, uh, or going to Mass soon, as we approach the altar for communion, let us pray that by receiving the Eucharist, our gifts may be strengthened, even doubled, so that when we stand before God on the day of judgment, we hear those words we heard today. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and join in your master's happiness. We ask this in the holy and the powerful name of Jesus, through the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.